Good evening, members of the public, staff and councillors, and welcome to the Ordinary Council meeting for Monday, the 19th of August, 2024. I declare the meeting open at 7pm, and I acknowledge that we are meeting on the land of the Budja, which is the land that we gather on. We pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Again, I'd advise all members of the gallery that this evening's meeting is being audio recorded, and that's in accordance with council policy. I would ask if you're making a question or making a statement or deputation to the meeting this evening, this will be audio recorded. Members of the public are reminded that no other visual or audio recording of this meeting by any other means is allowed. That brings us to agenda item number one, which is attendance and apologies. We do have um, several apologies this evening. We do have um, Councillor Morgan Bias, and we also have um, Council, sorry, Director of Corporate Services, Fraser Sullivan, is away, um, and so too is Director of Community Engagement, Mr. Brian Sullivan, and they're being represented by Kylie Pittman for the Director of Community Engagement and Ms Claire Mortimer as Acting Director of Corporate Services. That brings us to agenda item number two. 2.1 2 is responses to previous public questions taken on notice, and those responses are recorded in the agenda. That brings us to agenda item 2.2. 2.2 .2. 2 .2 is public questions. I declare public question time open now at 7.01 p.m. and would ask Mr. Greg Tortman from Serpentine to please come forward and ask his question. Mr. Tor Mr. Tortman is not present. Um, that question will be taken and an answer will be provided. Uh, the second question we have is from Mr. Bob Munro from Serpentine. If Mr. Munro is present, please come forward to the lectern and ask your question. Question 150 or so residents of the park most affected by this development, but they were not advised or consulted. Will the applicant and or the council meet with these residents to explain how the development will affect them and answer questions? Uh, Mr Munro, thank you for the question. I'll ask the Director of Development Services to please provide a response. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr President, and thank you for the question, Mr Munro. Um, the planning framework identifies the manner in which advertising of development applications take place. So in this regard, the owner of the park submitted the application and the planning framework required referral to surrounding landowners, which was undertaken. Unfortunately, the planning framework doesn't provide for referral, referral of applications to the tenants of an owner's property. Um, an owner would always be encouraged, um, however, to ensure their tenants are kept informed as to matters which may affect the property. Uh, thank you, Director. Mr Munro, would you like to ask your second question? to provide a booster pump at the end of 2008. This fact alone, why is the proposal still being considered? I thank you for your second question, Mr Munro, and again I'd ask the Director of Development Service to please provide a response. Oh, yeah. uh, thank you, Mr President, uh, through you. Um, so Water Corporation have provided advice pertaining to the reticulated water supply for the site. Um, officers have provided um, that advice to the applicant. Um, this will be an important matter for the applicant to demonstrate how they have addressed water matters uh, to the satisfaction of the Water Corporation. Uh, Mr Munro, if you ask your third question, I'm happy for you if there's anything to follow up on. So I'd ask you again to now ask your third question. Thank you. I'm sorry to process rent payment handled emergencies such as the regular power and water failures that residents currently experience. 
Thank you, Mr Munro, for your third question. Again, I'll ask the Director of Development Services to provide a response. Uh, thank you, Mr President, um, uh, through you. So this is a question that the applicant is best placed to address. However, it is a requirement that they comply with any provisions for park home parks under the Caravan Parks and Camping Grounds Act 1995. Thank you, Director. Uh, that's your three questions, Mr Munro. Um, I would ask you to take your seat, and if there is time later, I'm happy to um, indulge you to come forward and ask other questions that you may have. Thank you. Um, that brings us on to a uh, third question from the public, and that's from Eileen June Selmatch from Serpentine. Please come forward and ask your questions. And the satellite village. Residents will be very pleased with your recommendations regarding pathways between our satellite village and the township. This winter has done a fair amount of damage to the park. We are hopeful that the speed limit between Somerville Road and Park Entry can fall in line with North Dandalup and Bywood and be reduced to at least 60 kilometres an hour. So our question is, what timeline can we expect this work to be done as the situation is worsening? Um, thank you for your question. I'll ask the Director of Development Services to please provide a response. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you for the question. So proposed condition 11 of the officer's recommendation identifies a time frame of 90 days to submit plans for the pathway upgrades to the Shire so that we can assess and approve those plans. Uh, further, the pathway upgrade is conditioned to be required prior to the first additional park home being brought to the site. Um, this matter is subject to council consideration this evening. Um, also note that decisions are also able to be appealed to the State Administrative Tribunal and therefore an absolute definitive time frame cannot be provided at this time. Thank you for the response, Director. Um, I, I'd ask you to ask your second question, please. This related to the dust. Uh, we have a number of persons with moderate to severe lung conditions and heart conditions. One person had a lung transplant 18 months ago. These people may need to be evacuated on days that dust levels increase and cannot be avoided. Where can these people be evacuated to and who pays? Probably not in your remit. How can we be assured that notification is timely and that all residents are aware in advance? Uh, thank you for your second question, uh, Ms Delmatch. Again, I'd ask the Director of Development Services to please provide a response. Uh, thank you, Mr President. Thank you for your second question. So condition eight is recommended as part of the officer recommendation uh, pertaining to the management of dust and other activities associated with construction. Um, this construction management plan is required to be submitted and approved prior to commencement of any works and will be used to monitor compliance with the Shire's local laws. A standard requirement of any construction management plan includes notifying all potentially affected residents prior to works being undertaken that have the potential to generate dust. Um, and I guess we also say that we'd encourage you to speak with the park operator in terms of requests for any preventative measures. Thank you. I won't hold my breath. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Ms Selmatch, for your questions. I'd now like to ask Mr Paul Bly to come forward and ask his questions. Thank you very much for the opportunity to ask some questions. Um, yeah, first of all, I apologise if the wording in that not totally all up to speed and that, but it, yeah, it's just we was at this last minute to be able to have, um, knowing that this was on about this meeting. So anyhow, the first question, we had a number of months, we had rarely, rarely smell on plastic from the plastics factory, but plastics factory. And if we did, the odour was mild. However, in the last week, we've had the smell strong 
melt of plastic odor again numerous times a week, particularly then especially in the last week when there's when there's low cloud cover, westerly winds and southwesterly winds, and in summer during the warmer weather. Why is there been a distinct change in the frequency of snow? Smelling? Is it back to how it always has been since the operations began? I oh, thank you for your first question, Mr. Bly. And again, I'd ask the uh, Director of Development Services to please provide a response. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for your question. I understand you have you have raised a formal complaint on the 15th of August pertaining to odour concerns for the prior four days. Um, Shire officers will be investigating this as per normal procedures. Um, I cannot therefore comment further at this time given the recency of, of your complaint and the need for investigations to occur. Um, this matter tonight brings back conditions which were imposed by Council in its approval last year. Thank you, Director. Mr Bly, would you like to ask your second question? We've had objections to the plastic factory over the years since it commenced operation, and as the duty of care of ratepayers, we should have to be notified. Why were we not notified of this meeting? Thank you for your second question, Mr. Bly. Again, I'd ask the Director of Development Services to provide a response. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you for the question. So the nature of the matter on tonight's agenda is not a development application which is subject to community consultation. Rather, the matter deals with conditions 10 and 11 imposed as part of Council's previous decision to approve extended operating hours and remove limits on production of the plastics factory. These conditions provided for a 12-month reassessment of operations, specifically on whether the extended operating hours and uncapped production had been done satisfactorily. Such assessment has been undertaken by expert reporting pertaining to noise and air emissions. Uh, these studies have also been independently reviewed by separate experts sourced by the Shire and form the basis of the report on tonight's agenda. Thank you, Director, for the response, and thank you, Mr. Bly, for your questions. Oh, sorry, Mr. Bly, there's another question. Please ask your third question. Why have we received no confirmation? that anything is being done to resolve the big issue. Thank you, Mr. Bly, and apologies um, for uh, not realising you had a third question that there certainly was, so thank you for that. Uh, Director, again, can you please provide a response to Mr. Bly? Thanks, uh, thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for your third question. So in response, officers have managed each complaint in accordance with Council's compliance and enforcement policy. Um, DWER pollution response have also investigated complaints made. Information provided by officers is that complaints have been attended to, complainants kept informed and outcomes communicated per the uh, customer request um, module system of the Shire. Thank you for your response, Director, and thank you, Mr. Bly. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's um, 13 minutes has expired for public question time. Um, is there a councillor who's happy to extend public question time so we can take questions from the floor without any notice? Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Is there a second? Thank you, Councillor Bishop. Is anyone opposed? Thank you. How long for? Are you happy to make it another 15 minutes, Councillor Duggan? Happy to make it another 15. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you happy with that as a second? Is anyone opposed to extending public question time for 15 minutes? is carried unanimously. Um, are there any questions from the gallery that would like to come forward or any residents or ratepayers like to come forward and ask a question? I know Mr Munro, you had something else you wanted to ask, did you? Or you? I think Mrs Bond's already standing up. So if Mrs Bond, can you go first and then? No, thank you. Mr Murray, please come forward and ask your question. You certainly can. Thank you. 
I don't care. Regional managers are asked by one of their presidents directly. You don't care about the state. And he said, No, I don't. Tell someone else you're just parents, my question. That's the sort of attitude we're getting. Mr. Munro, can I please ask you to put it as a question as opposed to a statement? Yeah. You can make a statement later on. You have to make a question. If you want to make a statement that's next in the agenda. No, that's okay. I'm happy if you resume your seat and maybe makes. Yeah. Do it. Because, you know, there's a lot of concern there. Mr. Murray, you can make a statement which is um, next on the agenda. So if you'd like to, maybe. Yeah, Okay, thank you. Mrs. Bond, you indicated you wanted to ask a question. Would you like to come forward and ask a question? Because it was built many years ago, and you claimed that less than two metres from home is an acceptable level of radiation for not only adults but children living beneath this tower. What is the safe distance to live from a monopole? Well, I give you a question, um, Mrs. Bond. We'll take that question on notice. Do you have another question, Mrs. Bond? The health of people and animals. Thank you for the question, Mrs. Bond. There were some questions asked by councillors at the Q and A pertaining to those matters you raised. We will take that question on notice and give you a, a more definitive response. Is there a third question? Targeted councillors and council staff are protected from elements of bad behaviour by particular gallery members or councillors. Thank you for the question, Mrs. Bond. We'll take that question on notice. Are there any other questions from the floor? Yes, um, Mr. Tomlinson, please come forward. And then the lady down the back, you're after Mr. Tomlinson. Thank you. Yes, Sorry, can you please state your name and address, yes, not your address, your suburb, just for the recording. Thank you. Um, I know all the dry rate notices have been sent out as yet, and how they sent out and when's the due date on them, please. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I have received my rates notices, so I know it's the 16th of September from memory, rates are due, but maybe the director of 16th of September, I know my rates are due. And I have received in the letterbox um, and by email. So one property was um, by the letterbox and one was via um, email. Um, the rest of your question we will take um, on notice. Do you have another question, Mr. Thompson? So thank you to the shop from the sheep in the Colvinville Reserve. And then now eating the grass away. So thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Are there yeah, young lady down the back? General Kennedy, Darling Downs. Just wanted to ask a question of how come the Shire of Serpentine Jaredale does not have a reconciliation action plan uh, when other shires and councils? Thank you for the question. I'm looking at the CEO. Um, Mr. President, I think the Director of Community Engagement can answer the question. Thank you, Director. 
Thank you for your question. We are actually in the process of developing a re reconciliation action plan um, and INSPIRE is the first one. So we're liaising with all of the Indigenous groups to make sure we get that right and then we'll be doing further work on that. But it's certainly in progress. Thank you for the response, um, Director of Community Engagement. Are there any other questions from the floor? Yes, please come forward. Is it Mrs Reynolds? I've actually got a couple of questions here that have come from one of my neighbours who's unable to be here tonight. Question one was, at the OCM on May 2024, 20, President Cole stated in relation to the hypergrowth road ad advocacy that there was some science behind the priority roads and they haven't been plucked. There is a sense of, sorry, there is sense in the advocacy and that there is road crash data to back it up. To date, very little evidence of the so-called science used to support this priority list has been provided to the community. The road crash data freely available does not support the ordering of the priority list. For example, the car at Goddich and Abernathy Road intersection isn't even in the top 20 when it comes to crash injury, injury fossil frequency. So how does it get listed as the number one priority? How is that not being plucked? Can council provide to the community the methodology used to create this list? Uh, thank you for the question, Mrs. Reynolds. Um, I might ask the Director of um, Infrastructure Services to provide a response to that question. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we'll take that question on notice. Thank you, Director. What I will say is um, the CEO and I meet regularly with politicians. We actually had a meeting with the Director General of Transport last Thursday. Part of that was advocacy for nine roads, and some of those are intersections, as you alluded to. Um, that intersection you mentioned, the roundabout Cargoditch and Abernathy, was um, listed. There are nine projects that we're advocating for for those roads at a cost of $42 million. And as a Shire President, I stand by that. You have another question, Mrs. Reynolds? Thank you. And that wasn't actually my question, but that go into the minutes? So yes, it would. Yeah. Yep. Um, sorry, something else that's Quite high on the priority list as the community repeatedly raised the issue of continual lack of drainage over properties and roads in the Shire. A, what has the Shire done to rectify this? And B, what is the future plan to address this ongoing issue as we're seeing the continuous approvals of high density housing estates and application approvals where establishments are permitted to raise ground levels well above the road level? Uh, thank you for the question, Mrs Reynolds. I'm proud to say that on the 21st of August, which is this Wednesday at four o'clock, there is a community meeting at the CRC for people affected by problems with drainage, and that was brought to our attention by members in the Kentucky Drive and the Butcher Road area. So the best thing we can do is listen to the residents. I don't know if the CEO or the director wants to add more to that, or we'll take the rest of your question on notice. We can take the rest of the question, thank just, you. Mr President. Do you have another, another question, Mrs Reynolds? Okay. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public like to come forward and ask a question? Yes, Mr. Bly, would you like to come back? I can be serviced factory. I'm serviced factory to be able to, with a plastics factory, with that odour coming over our place regularly to continue and say that it's fine to continue to do that work and what's being done to rectify that. Because still from day dot, from the start, we've had the odour and we've still got the odour coming through what's been done. We'd like it's nothing to be. Well, I don't know. Please tell me what's been done to rectify the problem. Thank you, Mr. Bly. I think um, part of that question has already been answered by the Director of Development Services. But again, Director, would you like to add anything further to answer Mr. Bly's question? Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for the follow up um, question. Um, I do note and appreciate the, the recent complaint that you've made on, on Friday. We will need some time to look into that. The um, report tonight does um, deal with reports that have been generated by expert consultants, one but, but one pertaining to noise, the other pertaining to air emissions. Um, we have subject them to an independent peer review as well to um, assess the appropriateness of those reports. 
and that's what's being presented in um, the item this evening. Um, I do also just note that the decision last year still retains conditions 7, 8 and 9 that pertain to annual reporting. Um, we approach annual reporting for sort of any industry within the Shire where we need to have sort of some safe further safeguards built in. Um, so that's just a point that I think is also worth noting as well. Leave the answer, Director. Um, Mr. Bly, I know you are coming forward to make a statement. Um, notwithstanding that, is there any other questions you'd like to ask? You have already asked four, but we still got. Yeah. Okay. Um, members of the gallery, we've still got five minutes left of public question time. Are there any other ratepayers or residents like to come forward and ask a question? That being the case, I declare question time concluded at 7.25 p.m. That brings to agenda item number three, which is public statement time. Public statement time will commence at 7.26 p.m. And I ask Mr John Potton from Byford to please come forward and make his statement. That being the case, Mr Potton um, is not here. His statement is in the agenda and will be in the minutes. I'll now ask Mr Paul Bly to come back and make his statement, please. Was the council was the council listening to right players on this issue? Why hasn't they listened to the right players on this issue before? They have not done an environmental assessment that has been made aware of us, and we have not received a report from the health department. The guy has not listened to the right players as this has been a long-standing issue, the impact of the environmental side of it, not only for us, but for others in the surrounding areas, there is no communication between the Shire officers and the rate payers. Council and the Shire officers are working for the rate payers. They have a duty of care to their rate payers. We have been lodging complaints since the Plastics factory has been operating. We will, with no reports from anyone back to us, how is the Shire going to resolve this issue? Thank you for your statement, Mr. Bly. Uh, are there any other members of the gallery, being residents or ratepayers, like to come forward and make a statement? Mr. Munro, did you want to have that opportunity, or have you said enough about? Okay. That being the oh, Mrs. Reynolds, please come forward and make your statement. Is that I months ago advising that I would not be one of those people that would be standing up at every meeting and speaking. However, now that I am attending these meetings and starting who have some insight as to what happens in them, I'm finding that I can no longer um, hold that promise. So on that note, <clears throat> um, I would like to put forward the issue that we have with the Biker BMX track. Um, may I be provided to provide some photographs to the councillors? Um, they're probably the same photos, Mr Reynolds, that are on Facebook that I've been tagged in and other councillors will be able to see them. Yep. that we've not been able to use the Bike and BMX track at Briggs Park more often than we have been able to this winter. Due to the degradation of the track, it's unsafe to be used. Um, for the last few weeks, we've been doing bike foot on the road, which means that our riders actually have to travel to other locations and use other tracks in other shires um, where they have better facilities than what we do. We've also got a coach that trains at the bike foot track who has previously been number five um, in the world, the world title. He's again cancelled training for tomorrow night. We do have some really good riders in the bike community and we rely on this track every day for these kids to actually gain their experience and better riders. And hopefully one day may even be able to support 
I said in the Olympics, like we've had our equestrian um, personnel. So I've actually been doing a lot of fundraising and I've engaged a couple of contractors who are happy to be sponsors and have actually offered to donate in the vicinity of up to $20,000 worth of preparation, supply and lay of asphalt to two of the tabletops in order for us to be able to maintain this track and to be able to use it more frequently. That's about 130 square metres of asphalt and they were hoping to do it end of August, September. However, if we can't use the rest of the track, then this is just a waste of time and we're going to look ridiculous asking these people to contribute and have them donate $20,000 worth of product. Um, these, pe these contractors are people that support the community by providing estates in the local area, providing the asphalt that goes on our roads in the area, and they were willing to do this of their own accord. They offered to support us. I'm really asking the Shire and the councillors, please step up and provide some extra support to enable us to prepare this track. We're having a busy bee this weekend coming um, to get out there and patch the track. We do this with shovels and wheelbarrows every Friday afternoon so that the kids can race on it on a Friday night. Our facility is pretty poor and we don't want to be whinging about it all the time. We're out there advocating for ourselves, trying to raise funds and actually doing the work ourselves, volunteering so that these kids and adults can ride. We have people coming from other locations every week to ride at our track to gain extra training and extra track time. Please help us do what we can, provide the best that we can with what we've got. Um. Mrs Reynolds, thank you for making that statement. Um, I find that people coming to meetings and making statements is a lot more conducive than putting comments on Facebook. So I sincerely thank you. And what I also would say is if you look at the agenda item 10.4.5 with our federal government advocacy coming towards the federal election sometime between now and August next year, we are looking at stage 1B at Keenan Park for BMX. So thank you very much for making the statement. Is there anyone else from the gallery who would like to come forward and make a statement? Thank you, Mrs. Bond. Property radiation cooling monopole being erected on property with a breed. Telecommunications in this show has not improved at all, but the destruction wildlife has and the human health has suffered. Is it okay for people with medical? Is it okay for people with medical implants, such as pacemakers, to be put at risk because of these cancer-causing horrors? I have asked questions regarding one of these horrors in Richardson Street Serpentine for the second time tonight, because I was not satisfied with the lame excuse given to me previously. But I forget to mention that I was approached by someone while I was taking a photo of this radiation tower, but I also forget to mention that we had a very interesting discussion about this tower. There's only one reason I am angry and will not accept that lame excuse for the erection of this pole over the top of people. The rules are not there to be exploited for self-interested parties. Get this pole removed now and the cost is the responsibility of the proponent, not council. The Israeli study gave the relative risk for cancer at four times greater within 350 metres of a monopole. A quarter of a mile was considered the minimum safety distance. Cancer Council states the same distance for health and safety. The German study reported people living within 400 metres of these monopoles had over three times the normal rate for new cancers in 2004. People with hypersensitivity or other serious health issues may want to consider a half a mile or more distance. Michael Newt, MA, BS, ME, has studied electromagnetics for 28 years. In 2019, one of these poles was rejected, and rightly so, on the ground, so it was likely to your local law adversely impact on the rural lifestyle of surrounding residents 
which is contradictory to the rural policy area under the Rural Strategy Review 2013. Photo of the intended site has no housing and sparse bush, and yet it was claimed to be an unsuitable site. How then can councillors and council officers recommend the intrusion of this ap application on a bush forever site containing plenty of wildlife, rare flora, and residential homes in a rural area? Coming along Tonkin Highway, you can see all the radiation towers lighting the skyline. One tower can cover 40 kilometres and up to 72 plus kilometres. Broad distance announced between the tower on the corner of Charai Court and Hopkinson Road, the 445 Abernethy Road Oakwood is a total joke. It must have gone the long way round to state it is 1.53 kilometres. I think it is closer to 1,000 metres as the crow flies. You would have to stand under these poles to get reception, and when an application is being sought, the lack of service appears to be greatly enhanced than at other times. This monopole is far more intrusive than the one with use on Orton Road. Deceptive photos are a sleazy attempt to make this intrusive eyesore look a part of the surroundings. A pandering to buddies who need the money and don't give a damn about us or our environment. Read your policy on telecommunications infrastructure. It is part of your policy to ensure that mobile phone towers, monopoles, are developed in a manner which is compatible with the surrounding environment and not adversely impact the amenity of the area. When people have to sell up because you have put their health at risk, you shame yourself. The policy also states areas must locate onto existing towers, monopoles. Other parts of the world are now removing this tank causing eyesore. Why are you still promoting them? What do you have to say now? Thank you for your statement, Mrs Bond. Are there any other members of the public who would like to come forward and make a statement? Yep. Mrs Brazier, please come forward. Lisa Brazier, Mundajong. Um, my statement's in relation to um, item 10.4.5 and um, in regards to, firstly, thank you for considering BMX um, in your um, advocacy project. As I stated at the last OCM, um, BMX is racing, is an Olympic sport was included for the first time this year, and Australia actually won a gold medal. Um, I still do believe that um, there is a great opportunity for us to potentially build a BMX site to Olympic standards, given that BMX racing is listed as an Olympic sport for two Olympics time in Queensland. There will be um, a short window of opportunity for potentially renting this track out and um, making some money and bringing some exposure um, to the Shire. Um, and I hope that you add into that advocacy strategy that Australia did win a gold medal. Thank you, Mrs. Brazier. Are there any other people that come forward and make a statement? Ms. Lowe, please come forward and make your statement. Statements by election takes for election. Now the concept of transparency in residents. Transparency is when a decision is made and the reasons for the decision are clear to the residents and ratepayers. I cannot understand how the council can pursue transparency and the opening up of the question and answer sessions to the public and then decide to keep <coughs> some, some code of conduct matters secret it does not make any sense. Code of conduct matters relate directly to the behaviour of elected members. They should be published so that the residents and ratepayers will be informed <coughs> of such important matters. <coughs> Illogical decisions do not engender confidence in the council. Further to transparency is the issue of accountability. Each elected member should feel the need to provide a statement for the reasons for their votes in debated matters. Failure to do so means the elected member either has nothing to say or does not want to publish their reasons. 
Both excuses are unacceptable. <clears throat> Excuse me. The provision of reasons by the elected members for their votes relate to the responsibility an elected member has to the residents and ratepayers. The elected members' personal views or feelings are not relevant to their duty to the residents and ratepayers to act in accordance in a transparent <coughs> and accountable manner. If the elected members cannot provide cogent reasons for their votes on debate and matters, they should consider their suitability for their role. Thank you, Mrs. Lowe. Any other questions? Sorry, any other statements from the public gallery? That being the case, public statement time is concluded at 7.40 p.m. That brings to agenda item number four, which is petitions and deputations. I'll ask Mr. Shane Warmel to come forward regarding item 10.1.8, consideration of information provided to satisfy conditions 10 and 11 of approved warehouse plastic production at lot 41, 17 Carlup Siding Road, Carlup. Thank you, Mr. Warmel. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, uh, Mr. President and the elected members. I'm here to speak with you this evening regarding item 10.1.8, the recommended approval of unrestricted operations of Smart Streams Plastics Facility at Tata. <clears throat> My name is Shane Wormel, and I'm joined by Darren Cooper, who chairs our advisory, group advisory board. Darren addressed you on this item one year ago when our conditional approval for unrestricted operations was granted. As one of the largest employers in the Shire, my family business, Wormel Group, has operated from our current Cardup location since 2016. From our Cardup base, we provide civil, civil construction services and deliver approximately half of Perth's new residential lots. In addition to supplying important concrete and plastic components used in these subdivisions. Our recently published Group Environmental, Social and Governance Plan, or ESG plan, sets out the measures we use to be best, be the best corporate citizen we can possibly be, and includes a strategy to continually improve over time and update that ESG plan every three years. This evening's item concerns our plastic operations, where we manufacture a range of sewer pits, maintenance shafts, and underground items. As many of you may or would be aware, our innovative plastic products were invented by me personally a number of years ago and are direct alternatives or replacements for in-ground concrete products. They, of, they have much lower car carbon inputs, are lighter and therefore safer to work with on active construction sites or in replacement scenarios and have significantly longer lifespans than traditional concrete alternatives. These advantages are recognised by the market and from our humble operations in Carter, we export our plastic underground products to the east coast of Australia and over the past few years to a rapidly growing market in the USA, particularly Florida and Texas. It's inevitable that a business like ours will generate some level of noise, odour and other impacts such as truck movements. So we were supportive of the Shire's position a year ago to allow us to operate the plastics facility without volume or time limits for a one year period, subject to more intensive noise and odour monitoring. We've always been respectful of our neighbours and have strived to minimise any noise, odour or other amenity impacts as much as possible. We maintain robust systems and processes around mitigation and management of our odour and noise in particular. And our group work health, safety, quality and environmental manager maintains a com complaints register to ensure we can quickly address any issues that arise. In the extensive odour and noise monitoring we've undertaken over the past 12 months and in the Shire's own review of those reports, we're pleased to see that those efforts have been effective and that we've been able to mitigate any impacts from our unrestricted plastics operation on our surrounding neighbours. We're also required to submit odour and noise reports to the Shire by 1 December each year. And this is an appropriate measure to ensure ongoing amenity impacts are minimised. However, as you can appreciate, these noise and odour reports are comprehensive and extensive. They require significant management time from us to coordinate, and they come at a significant cost. Our only request would be that having just been through this exercise now, and with December now only four. Uh, 14 weeks away, that our next round of reporting be submitted uh, in December 2025. In closing, 
Can I thank the officers for the cooperative working relationship and diligence they have shown in this process, Mr. President? I'm happy to take any questions the elected members may have, and I thank you all for your time this evening. Thank you, Mr. Wormall. Um, I'd now. Sorry, um, President Coles, could I please ask a question of Mr. Wormall? Yes, please do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wormall, for um, the words that you popped together for us this evening. My question relates to what Mr. Vilas discussed with us this evening. Um, when the residents do have their complaints um, as a best corporate citizen, what is it that you put in place immediately when that response first comes in, please? What is it that you do? As a member of um, ensuring that you have best corp you are a best corporate citizen yes. to look after a local resident like Mr. Bar when he has a complaint that comes in. What's your first response, your immediate response, please? Thank you. Well, naturally, the first uh, part of that is we need to know about the complaint. Um, we 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 do. Um, in fact, we've been some discussions with the shire officers about making ourselves available if, if if we wanted to have. A, a communication pathway directly with us. We're happy to do that, and 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 again, we have that complaints register there. We we hear nothing directly from the from the um, grounding residents, uh, and any correspondence with us generally comes from your ratepayers to you guys, and then from to us. Thank you, Sir. Would you have another question? A secondary question, if I may. Thanks, Mr. President. Um, and so if there was such a pathway for residents to have a discussion directly with you, um, what would be the response that you and Mr Cooper would have to those residents' concerns, please? Okay, the question that came to us or the complaint on notice, go back to them on that basis. I, I'm not sure exactly what the response would be without seeing the complaint or the question, naturally. But uh, it would be it would go into our complaints register, and those things will actually be in timely fashion. So, uh, if there was a complaint sent to us, then obviously the first, or not, maybe not obvious. Sorry, the first thing we would do was would revert to any of the testing or any of the third party stuff that we've had done that which imposed on us. And uh, and I did take on notice uh, some of the questions from um, from the public members earlier that um, it was perceived as though the shire was not doing anything. And it was probably perceived as though the Shire was not, nobody was giving reports from the Department of Health or whatever else. Um, I, I, maybe you guys are going to show that tonight and perhaps that's a, a, a good step towards actually uh, resolving some of the, some of the um, turn there and, and misperceptions about what is actually being done because there has been an extensive amount done. And uh, I guess communication with, the, with these people would, be, would perhaps be a benefit. Thank you, Mr. Warmer. Thank you for answering those questions. Um, I'd now like to ask uh, Ms Amanda Butterworth, the Associate Director from Alerting and Associates regarding item 10.1.6, change of use from Caravan Park to Park Home Park, including formation of 40 new park homes, sites and construction of sales office and lawn bowls, lot 820-2489, Southwestern Highway at Serpentine. Village is operated since 1987 and is presently owned and managed by Tasman. Serpentine Village presently accommodates 104 park home sites and a number of caravan and tourist accommodation sites. The application seeks approval for the, uh, for the site to operate as a park home park uh, land use with an additional 40 home sites for new park homes and a temporary sales office. Park homes provide an affordable housing option for the over 55 population. Location of the proposed park home sites are at the northwest corner, where 37 park home sites are proposed, and three new sites in the southwestern corner. The northwestern corner includes minor modification to road layout, and the southwest corner includes sealing of an existing gravel road. The park home sites range in size, with the largest being 352 square metres. There are no specific home designs provided in this application as each home, uh, each park home is tailor-made in accordance with the residents' requirements and will be selected from park home designs from a variety of uh, park home manufacturers such as Modular WA and Fleetwood. Each park home will be subject to a building permit ensuring that the design satisfies the Shire prior to its construction. 
We have emailed councillors images of typical uh, park home designs, and we assure you that the image in figure four of the report of the agenda does not reflect the type of park home that is proposed to be accommodated on site. In our opinion, the image in figure four depicts what we describe as a tiny home rather than a park home. Benefit of the site operating as a park home entirely is that residents will feel a greater sense of place, community and security by removing the, um, the transient uh, caravan, and sorry, the transient um, tourist accommodation that is presently offered on site and it will become more secure by purely operating, operating as a park home. We thank the officers for their thorough report and we support the officers' recommendation to approve the application. However, however, there are a number of changes to conditions for which we seek council support. Firstly, condition one, we seek correction to the date of the bushfire management plan from 2023 to 2024. There are a number of other conditions which require lodgement of documents within 90 days. We seek the removal of the requirement to comply with the conditions within 90 days. However, we highlight that the applicant accepts the need to comply with those conditions prior to any park home being bought on site. There is a substantial amount of work that needs to be done to satisfy these conditions and to require compliance of these conditions within 90 days would, could mean that we're in non-compliance with the approval. And Tasman want to make this development happen. So we request your consideration to delete the 90 day requirement in regard to these conditions. Our request to delete the 90 day requirement, uh, right, um, we believe should be just purely prior to any park home parks being placed on the site or prior to an issue of a building permit. And those conditions that we seek review of in that regard relate to condition three for a bushfire management plan, condition four for public art, condition six for stormwater management, condition seven for civil engineering plans, condition eight for construction management plan, condition nine for the wastewater management plan, and condition 12 for the landscape plan. As I've said before, we're very happy to require to provide all that documentation. It's the limitation to provide it within 90 days, which we request be deleted from that condition. We also seek modification to other conditions as well. Condition five requires lodgement of a noise management plan. We've lodged a noise intrusion report, and that's also referred to in what is condition 14 in your agenda. Based upon the findings of that noise intrusion report, we consider that there is no need for a noise management plan as the recommendations are already included within the noise intrusion report. In regard to part B of condition five, the noise intrusion report does not recommend the use of a noise wall or a noise bund. The introduction of a noise bund would result in a reduction in the area alongside Southwest Highway that will be available for the landscaping and a pedestrian path. Alternatively, we say that a noise wall would result in this um, noise wall would result in um, and potentially having a solid wall along Southwestern Highway, which we consider not to be a desirable outcome, particularly given the pleasant outlook presently experienced, which is proposed to be improved with more landscaping. The applicants request consideration of a modified condition to simply comply with the recommendation of a noise intrusion report and therefore we request deletion of the recommended condition and replacement condition as follows, pursuant to state planning policy 5.4, quiet house design packages shall be implemented and other requirements implemented as detailed in the stamped acoustic assessment to the satisfaction of the Shire of Serpentine Jaredal for the life of the development. In regard to condition 10, this requires removal of the land sales office within two years. Because of two years of the date of the decision, because the land sale office may not be introduced on site for a number of months or possibly more than a year, we seek modification to this condition to allow the, the land sales office to be on site for up to two years rather than from two years of the date of the approval. And we support removal of the uh, land sales office at the time that all of the uh, home park home sites within the property have been sold. We accept parts A to C of condition 10, but request uh, consideration of modifying the first part of condition 10 to read as follows. The land sales office and any associated bitumen hard stand areas for the land sales office 
shall be removed within a period of four years from the date of the approval or upon sale of all sites from within the property, whichever is the lesser. The Land Sales Office shall comply with the following standards of the Shire's Local Planning Policy 4.8 Land Sales Office, unless otherwise approved by the Shire of Serpentine, Jared Ale. And then continuing with those points A to C as listed in the Office of Recommendation. Condition 11 requires construction, drainage and lighting of a dual-use path from Serpentine Village to Serpentine Town Centre, which we calculate to be in the vicinity of 1.5 kilometres. We note that in June 2023, the Shire sought to impose a condition on a JDAP approval for Piara Waters Lifestyle Village and a childcare centre in Byford that was to require construction of a footpath be constructed beyond the boundaries of the lot subject of those developments. In determining the, those applications, the JDAP considered that the footpath requirement was too onerous and not considered appropriate in the context of those developments. We consider the same applies here. We consider that a proposal for 40, 40 park home sites does not generate the need for a 1.5 kilometre path for a rural area. Tasman would accept a condition to construct a footpath on the subject site, as shown on the current landscape plan, that would provide access for those new 37 home sites um, to the um, adjacent cafe and service station on the adjacent lot. Condition 13 requires establishment of a water point, point and effluent dump point for travelling caravans and RVs. The application seeks approval for Serpentine Village to be a park home park and there'll be no travelling caravans or RVs on site other than those that may be parked on site when not being used by the residents. The proposal for 40 park home sites does not generate the need for an effluent dump point or a water point. As the application does not generate the need for these services, we consider that the condition is not reasonable and therefore we request deletion of condition 13. That's a lot for you to take in. I did provide to councillors a copy of the amendments to the conditions, which we do seek your support on with track changes, so you could clearly see those uh, matters that we did seek your consideration of. We consider that the development will be an asset to the Shire of Serpentine, Jaredale, in that it will create opportunities for more affordable housing for an ageing population, and such affordable housing is needed given the cost of living crisis that we're presently enduring. Um, we thank the staff for your time. Thank you for listening to me tonight. Um, I'm available to answer any questions. And I also have Alan Burgess with me on behalf of Tasman, who can also assist to answer any queries and to respond to any matters. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't believe there's any questions. Thank you. That brings us on to agenda item number five, which is President's Report. Good evening, elected members, residents, ratepayers. Welcome to August 2024 Ordinary Council meeting. This year's Shire budget was presented at July's special council meeting, my first as a Shire president. The budget reflects our commitment to delivering responsive services that enhance our community's livability. Most notably, it shows that we've listened to our residents and ratepayers and that we're a shire that cares. We've allocated $83 million towards crucial projects and capital works, including playgrounds, community facilities, roads and amenities. This budget balances community expectations with responsible financial management. I enjoyed speaking with residents of the budget breakfast briefing where our directors detailed the 2024-25 budget. Feedback was positive and we're considering changes to the event to enable more people to attend next year. Meeting the infrastructure needs of our growing population is a priority. The resolution passed by Council at the July Special Council meeting confirms our commitment to Keenan Park and that sporting recreation precinct. We are adjusting the budget and timeline to address unforeseen challenges and deliver high quality facilities for our community. As the 2025 state and federal elections approach, we're intensifying advocacy for council endorsed projects. The Shire CEO and I will meet with MPs and Cabinet members to advocate for Keenan Park netball courts, the expansion of the Serpentine Jaredale Community Recreation Centre, 
the Jarrodale Trail Centre, maintenance of nine priority local roads, and upgrades to the Shire Fire Stations. We're developing a comprehensive advocacy strategy and recently met with Matt Keogh, MP, Shadow Minister for Veterans Affairs and Defence Personnel. And you'll notice that there has been a realignment or redistribution, I, sh I should say, of the seat of Burt. So Mr Keogh, or the Honourable Matt Keogh, is now a local member that has some of the Shire of Serpentine Gerardale. So lucky for Mr Keogh. It was a productive discussion and we appreciate his insights. Firstly, or sorry, finally last month, we hosted Acting Premier Rhea Safiotti at the Building Tomorrow Together Breakfast with the Peel Chamber of Commerce and Industry. This event was valuable with the Acting Premier's understanding of regional challenges and being particularly infrastructure, and that was extremely positive. We also valued the support of Hugh Jones, MLA, a local member for Darling Range, who spoke at the breakfast. We look forward to strengthening our relationship with all levels of government to achieve the best outcomes for our growing community. Thank you. That brings us on to agenda item number six, which is declaration of elected members and officers' interest. We do have one declaration tonight, and that is from the Chief Executive Officer, Mr Paul Martin. He declared a financial interest in item 8.1, which is a special CEO employment committee meeting. The nature of Mr Martin's interest is that the item is considering the recommendations from his CEO employment committee. The extent of the interest is that the recommendation relates to Mr Martin's annual performance review and his remuneration. So Mr Martin will leave the chamber while that matter is discussed. That brings us on to agenda item number seven. Agenda item number seven is confirmation of minutes of previous council meetings. 7.1 is ordinary council meeting 15th of July 2024. Do I have a councillor who would like to move a motion in relation to this item? Councillor Mike. Mr President, I would like to put forward to the motion to publish the minutes in full. Thank you. Is there a councillor who's happy to second that motion? I'm happy to second that. Is there anyone opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. Do we need a difference to officer's recommendation, Mr CEO, or is that? I think that could help, Mr President, actually. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess in light of some recent legal advice on the matter, um, suggesting that we can publish the minutes in full. Is that suffice, Mr CEO? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Uh, sorry, Councillor Mack. Uh, that brings on to... So I'll just wait for the minute secretary. Thank you. That brings on to agenda item 7.2. 7.2 is the minutes from the special council meeting being held or held on the 25th of July 2024. Is there a councillor who's happy to move a motion in regards to this agenda item? Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Is that as per the officer's recommendation? Yes, thanks. Is there a councillor who's happy to second the motion? Thank you, Councillor Mazzini. Is there anyone opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. That brings us to agenda item uh, eight, which is re receipt of minutes or reports and considerations of adoption, recommendations from committee meetings held since the previous council meeting. 8.1 pertains to the CEO employment committee meeting. Uh, Mr. Mr President, Martin, I've declared a financial interest, so I'm going to leave the room. And Director of Development Services will, will assume the CEO's vacant chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Trossick. Is there a councillor who's happy to move a motion in relation to this agenda item? Thank you, Councillor Duggan. And what would you like to move? Happy to move officer's recommendation. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Is there a councillor who's happy to second this motion? Thank you, Councillor Jarrett. Is anyone opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Trossick.
Uh, thank you for returning, Mr. CEO. That motion was carried unanimously. That brings on to agenda item 9.1, which is notice of motion pertaining to Australia Day. Um, that is a motion that I put forward, so I will move that motion. Is there a councillor who is happy to second that motion? Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Is anyone opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. Agenda item 9.2 is a notice of, sorry, Madam. So agenda item 9.2 is notice of motion, improving council transparency and accountability. That was brought forward to the meeting by council bias, who is an apology. So that motion will um, lapse. Before we get to agenda item number 10, I'll go through the on block process. So as part of the Shire's efforts to ensure the efficiency and effectiveness of meetings, tonight's meeting will include the opportunity for matters to be considered by council on block. This means that a group of matters dealt with in multiple reports can be grouped together, considered and voted upon as a single motion. Matters that are not to be included in on block decisions are those which require an absolute majority, matters to be determined behind closed doors, declared interests made in relation to the item and deputations or statements related to that item. Officers have prepared a list of matters that meet this criteria. I will now read those report numbers and titles and invite any elected member to identify any matters that they wish to be removed from the on-block consideration. Removing a matter from on-block consideration does not signify objection to a matter and does not require the matter to be debated. Removing a matter from on block simply means that the matter is to be considered separately. The matters that have been identified for consideration on block at tonight's meeting are as follows. 10.1.1, proposed road naming, lot 101 and 34 Evans Way, lot 1 Abernethy Road, lot 103 Bushman Glade and lot 9001 Bushman Glade, Byford. 10.1.2, road naming application to remove approved name, lot 9013 Haywire Avenue, Whitby. 10.1.4, proposed adoption of amended local policy 4.5, short stay and temporary accommodation. 10.1.5, proposed road naming application, lot 9060 Orton Road, Byford. 10.1.7, proposed medical centre motor vehicle repair shop and seven bulky goods showrooms at lot 9658 Robertson Road, Byford. Mary, sorry, 10.1.9, Murray Woodland Management Plan, release for public comment. 10.1.10, .10, proposed scheme amendment number five to local planning scheme number three, normalisation of Byford District Structure Plan, corner Southwest Highway, Nettleton Road, Byford. 10.3.1, confirmation of payment of creditors, July 2024. 10.3.2, monthly financial report, June 2024. 10.3.5 Corporate Business Plan Performance Report April to June 2024 and 2023 to 2024 end of year. 10.4.1 Department of Local Government Sport and Cultural Industries Club Night Lights Grant Program Application Prioritisation. 10.4.2 Establishment of Social Representatives on Access and Inclusion Advisory Group. 10.4.3 Keysbrook Fire Incident Community Debrief Information Report. 10.4.4 Endorsement of a Bushfire Risk Management Plan 2024-2026 and finally 10.5.1 Peel Region Leaders Forum Minutes. Uh, could councillors please indicate if they wish to remove any of the aforementioned reports from the matters to be considered on block? Councillor Mack. Mr President, can I just confirm agenda item 10.4.2? I think it might have just been a slip of the tongue there, but that it is an establishment of a school representative, not a social representative. Good pick up. Thank you, Councillor Mack. It was school representative. Um, are you happy for that to remain? Councillors, anyone that would like to remove any of those um, agenda items from on block? That being the case, can I call for a councillor who is happy to move those uh, motions to be passed on block? Thank you, Councillor Mazzini. Yeah. Councillor Jarrett, you happy to second? Thank you. Is anyone opposed? Motion is carried unanimously.
So agenda item 10 is Chief Executive Officer Reports. 10.1.1 has been carried on block. 10.1.2 likewise. That brings us to agenda item 10.1.3, proposed telecommunications infrastructure, lot 350, 445 Abernathy Road, Oakford. Um, councillors, there was an alternate motion that I put forward. I don't know if it's been circulated. I did via email. I don't know if there's a hard copy on people's desks. I think I did yes afternoon, but I'll find the... It's to add the landscaping as a final condition around the base of the infrastructure. I'll just pass the minute secretary's got a copy there, just a present, which might help. Was it just that adding a point C? Yeah, thank you, Mr. CEO. So it's the officer's recommendation with the addition of Paragraph C, which is um, prior to submission of building permit, a landscaping plan should be prepared by the applicant and submitted to the Shire for assessment and approval. The plan shall demonstrate the provision of landscaping area of minimum depth to 10 metres on the north and west side of the development compound, 7.5, sorry, 7, yeah, 7 7.5 metres on the eastern side with reduced width to retain a five metre fibre break corridor. Such landscape areas shall comprise a mix of advanced plantings comprising tall trees intermixed with medium and ground cover species in order to provide fit, filtered screen of the development. The selection of tall trees is to comprise heights and maturity which will provide opportunities for line of sight screening from the adjoining bush forever and trails drainage route um, which adjoin the subject land. Upon approval of the plan, landscaping to be established by the beginning of the 2025 planting season and thereafter maintain to the satisfaction of the Shrove Serpentine Jarrada. Is there a councillor who's happy to second the alternate motion? Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Is there anyone opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. And Mr. President, we already need a reason for the difference from the officer recommendation. Uh, thank you, Mr. CEO. So the reason being is to allay the amenity concerns as raised. Say so to allay, to allay. To. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Thank you, um, Madam Minute Taker. Um, agenda item 10.1.4 was passed on block. 10.1.5 was passed on block. 10.1.6 is change of use from Caravan Park to park home site, including formation of 40 new park home sites and construction of sales office and lawn bowls at lot 820-2489, Southwestern Highway, Serpentine. Is there a councillor who would like to move a motion? Councillor Duggan. Thanks, Mr. President. Um, I have got a number of um, alterations that I'd like to look at, if I may, based on the feedback that we've got this evening. Yes. Um, point three, um, removal of the within 90 days. Condition four, removal. Yes. So is that point four? So we're just removing the words within 90 days? Yes. So would it start, where would it start? Um, prior to any, and uh, yeah, prior to any park homes being bought to the site, and then the removal of the words which say whichever is the lesser. Okay. okay. And we're going to point four. And point four, the same prior to any park homes being bought to the site, and removal of whichever is the lesser. Same for point five too, please. Any other changes? Yes, please. Point six, um, removal of within 90 days um, and for that to start prior to any park homes being bought to site and removal of the whichever is the lesser. And the same with uh, condition seven, please.
and same with condition eight or not? Yep, yeah, same with condition eight, please. And condition nine. Um, and with condi oh, sorry, condition 10, can I have reworded to say that the land sales office is to remain as a permanent structure as a point of contact for residents? And then, and what change? Any other change? And then the rest of that can be deleted. Um, the rest of point ten can be deleted. Oh, oh okay. Um, can we just go back for a second? Can I, would you want to consider? Just want to ask the director of planning. Yeah, ask, advice, yes, please. Whether there's any, um, whether that could be, so it, could be merged together somehow. It, yeah, it needs to be there as a sales office, but then after the sales is completed, rather than be removed in the bitumen hard stand area, removed. I want it to be uh, remain, if I may, um, as a permanent office. And whether Director of Development Services could help us with some wording Thank you. Um, to achieve what Councillor Duggan's attempting, please. Would you even add as a point D, perhaps? And then go to the um, shall comply with the following standards. Yeah. So it says while well, use as a land sales office, the land sales office shall comply. Yeah. Thank you. Um, point 11 uh, the removal of the within 90 days. Um, so it starts with prior to any park homes being bought and remover of the whichever is a lesser. And the same with point 12, please. And removal of point 13 completely, please. And the rest to remain as is. Thank you. Um, thank you, Councillor Duggan. Director, do you have a comment? Thank you, Director. Good pick up. Um, is there a councillor who's happy to second the amended motion? Councillor Jarrett, you happy to second it? Thank you, Councillor Jarrett. Is there anyone opposed? Can I just ask a question, Director? Um, in terms of the site, sorry, the sales office remaining on site, what can we do, if anything, to make sure that's um, a structure that adds value to the um, development, i.e. it's kept in a certain condition, or is that just a normal thing that would happen through the Shire's ongoing assessment of the site? Is, is there, so whilst it may be a good idea for it to remain there, how do we, if, if we can, determine the use of it and how it remains and is operated, I suppose, out of, if that makes sense? Yeah, thank you for the question, uh, Mr. President. Um, the, I guess the definition of a point of contact for residents is um, quite broad, which can be an advantage. It can also be a disadvantage in terms of what that actually um, seeks to mean. Um, I think it will come down to, 
I guess our our ongoing relationship with the operator um, and you know, hearing the debate tonight, I think there's a, a clear understanding um, or councils portrayed a clear um, point of view in terms of the um, issue about um, on-site amenity um, and, and residents who are number of vulnerable residents, I guess, um, having some of that on-site amenity. So I don't think we could prescribe anything more through the condition, but um, I think it would come down to the ongoing sort of relationship uh, which the Shire would have with the with the operator. Thank you, Director. Um, Council, is there anyone that's opposed to the motion? Not opposed, but I do have a question. Certainly, Council, no. Just a matter of, uh, I guess, in the um, motion that come through, I may have missed it on point one, but it was suggested that uh, condition one seek the correction of the date of the bushfire management plan from 2023 to 2024, if the director uh, had any comments of that. Yeah, sorry, thank you, director, please uh, assist Councillor Mack. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, that, that would be appropriate to occur. Yeah. So as a mover, Councillor Duggan, are you happy with that? Change yes. 23 to 24. Yes, thank, thank you. you. And seconder, Councillor Jarrett, are you happy with that? Yes, Monitor, thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor, is anyone opposed to the motion? Motion is carried unanimously. And we will need a difference to the officer's recommendation, please, Councillor Duggan. To allow suitable time for the proponent to perform the processes, no, to allow suitable time for the um, processes required by the proponent to be completed properly and to ensure adequate um, resident representation between proponent and shire. You, you didn't get that, um, Adam that Taker. Can you please repeat that, please? Oh, no. <laughs> to be completed properly and secondly to ensure adequate re resident representation between proponent and shire Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Can I ask the director if that's good? Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Are you happy with that? Yes, thank you. Thanks, Madam Secretary. Thank you. That brings us on to agenda item 10.1.7, which was passed on block. Um, 10.1.8. Is consideration of information provided to satisfy conditions 10 and 11 of approved warehouse plastic production at lot 4117 Cardup Siding Road, Cardup. I believe that there is an alternate motion for this. That I think I think there's several. I'll see who circulated theirs first and they can have the benefit of moving that if need be. Councillor Duggan, did you have an alternate? I do have an alternate. I'm just trying to get it up now because it was circulated late. And I think um, it was circulated before yours, Councillor Bishop. Uh, Mr President, before any motions, could I ask a few questions of the yeah, director? Certainly, yeah. Uh, firstly, I'd just like to understand how many complaints have been received in relation to the proponent's business in the past year? Thank you for the question. Director of Development Services, are you able to provide an answer to that question? I uh, certainly uh, can uh, through you, Mr. President, and I'll just bring up the um, response I gave following agenda um, Q and A. Um, if you just bear with me, we will locate that. So including that received last Friday or the Friday just passed, let me just make sure that's the case. Okay. 
Okay, here we go. All right, let me just count them so I have the exact number. One, August, two, January, three, January, four, October, five, September. So five, um, uh, September, October, two, um, coinciding with the same period in January, and then the most recent one was um, this Friday just gone, so five in total over the last 12 months. Okay, thank, thank you for the answer, Director. Do you have another question? question if I yes, may. certainly. What kind of remediation action was required or what was the outcome of those complaints? Thank you for the question, Council Bishop. Director, are you able to provide a response? Uh, certainly, uh, Mr President. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, so, Every time we receive a complaint, our environmental health officers will attend. Um, although it, it is funny to say, the, we do have staff who are, are calibrated sniffers who actually have to meet a certain um, ability to be able to go and detect if odours um, are present. So when they attended site, um, the feedback I had was that there were no um, odour impacts uh, detected um, upon their visitation. Thank you for the answer, Director. Councillor Bishop, do you have another question? Is there any other questions, councillors? That being the case, um, Councillor Dunn, did you find your alternate? Yes, um, if I could put forward an alternate recommendation as circulated earlier on this, um, this evening, and that is that Council 1 notes the satisfactory performance of conditions 10 and 11.2 um, to in reference to condition 10, uh, can I just say that point one notes the satisfactory performance of conditions 10 and 11 shouldn't have a two point after it. Um, point two, in reference to conditions 10, approves the production to remain unrestricted due to satisfactory outcome associated with air emissions and odour impacts subject to a 24 slash 7 slash 365 contact number being made available on the company's website, which is clearly specified as a number which residents can call to report any air emissions and or odour impacts they detect in order for such to be recorded and addressed as part of annual reporting required by conditions seven and nine. And point three, um, in reference to condition 11, approves the hours of operation to remain unrestricted due to satisfactory outcomes associated with noise subject to 24 slash 7 slash 365 contact number being made available on the company's website which is clearly specified as a number which residents can call to report any noise impacts they detect in order for such to be recorded and addressed as part of annual reporting required by condition 8 please. Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Is there a councillor who's happy to second that alternate motion? I'm happy to second it for the purpose of debate. Is there anyone opposed? Councillor Bishop, are you opposed? Councillor Duggan, would you like to open debate? Thanks, Mr President. We've heard here this evening that um, Often residents have had complaints um, that have been made and then by the time a shire officer gets there, the smell has actually moved on or the noise has, has stopped. Um, sometimes these complaints are made on a Friday evening. They do require, as part of the reporting, to have wind conditions and so forth also recorded. This is quite onerous on the um, residents. So I have no doubt that the amount that's been recorded is actually much lower than what has actually been experienced by the nearby residents. For mine, this um, alternate um, recommendation is one where it directly connects the residents with the company so that they have 24-7 connection, they have immediate response, um, and it just means that we are opening up those lines of communication. It then follows through with the um, Shire being involved um, with the annual reporting, and um, I think that it's a way that we can get much better results 
for our residents uh, based on what they've said this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duggan. As a second, I'll reserve. Um, Councillor Bishop, would you like to speak against? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to firstly foreshadow uh, that if this motion's not successful, I will move the motion that I circulated earlier, uh, which is essentially a variant of option two. Uh, I appreciate that it's a very last minute email to, to my fellow councillors. Um, look, in, in researching this uh, issue before us, uh, I've had a look at the recent, uh, sorry, the August 2023 Ordinary Council meeting uh, community feedback uh, on the original proposal um, that's come back before us due to some temporary conditions that were put in place. Um, there was quite significant community feedback about the impacts that were at least perceived by nearby residents uh, to the proponent's business. It's unfortunate and perhaps unintended that the approval at that time by design has not allowed community consultation at this stage. Uh, and as I understand it, we're being asked to make a decision one way or another to allow the unrestricted approval to continue uh, or to refuse it without consulting the community further. The, the individuals who have spent the past year experiencing what it is that was approved back in August 2023, I think it's quite important that we provide a pathway to be able to consult our residents um, and understand what beyond the objective evidence uh, is subjectively being experienced by them so we can properly assess amenity impact. Thank you. Uh, thank you for um, your comments, Councillor Bishop. I'm just trying to find the email that you circulated. Um, I don't know whether you're minded to re-email it unless I've lost it in my emails. Uh, yeah, I can do that very quickly. Whilst Councillor Bishop is doing that, is there any council like to speak for the motion? Don't bring it up yet, Terrell. Did the council needs to debate that one, please? Um, thank you for that. Um, I'll speak for the motion. Um, the comments I will make is that council did pass this some 12 months ago. Um, at the time, council tried to do the right thing by um, doing a 12 month, I'm trying to think of the right term, not a clause, but a 12 month condition. So if there were any concerns, they were passed on to the Shire. It appears that has happened and the director has given that information tonight for the five complaints that have been um, made. Some may say that five complaints over a 12 month period is not a lot, um, but I think that's probably enough for us as um, councillors, elected representatives to listen to the community. So um, why am I speaking for the motion? I'm speaking for the motion because um, Notwithstanding the operators, I think the operators are doing the right thing. We need to um, allay the concerns of the community. And I think this alternate motion where there's a 24-hour phone number accessible by residents is a way forward for residents who are concerned to pick up the phone and ring directly with the um, operators of the facility. So the operators of the facility can continue to do the work they do. Um, and I'm not certainly here to um, say... Um, what a good corporate citizen um, Warmels are. What I would say is that that statement was made tonight by um, Mr Warmel himself. So I think this is a balance between um, the necessary construction that they do, but also to listen to the community by them having that um, assurance of a 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year, um, a, ability to ring someone directly at Warmels to um, listen to their concerns. So I commend this motion. Is anyone opposed, anyone else who'd like to speak against the motion? Uh, that being the case, um, Councillor, would you like to close? Thanks, Mr. President. Um, it is somewhat difficult that we are placed in a position that um, the proponent is purely working within um, their rights. They are on industrial land. The reason we are involved in this is because we have a block of industrial land that's smack bang in the middle of um, of our urban and rural areas. Um, and so with that in mind, the motion that I've put forward is to find a balance where there can be some open communication and some understanding between those uh, two very, very differing views 
and to hopefully find some um, some understanding and some solutions um, that are timely and that um, the residents' concerns can be dealt with in a more timely manner than what they currently are because the current system um, is failing them and I've heard that very loudly. So for that reason, I commend this motion. Uh, thank you, Councillor Duggan. All those in favour of the alternate motion? All those against? Motion is carried 5-1. Um, and Councillor Duggan, again, we will need a reason for difference, please. Um, to allow accurate and immediate reporting of residents' concerns, please. Are you happy with that wording, Councillor Logan? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, that brings us to agenda item 10.1.9, which is a Mari Woodland Management Plan release for public comment. That was passed on block. 10.1.10 .10 is proposed scheme amendment lot, sorry, number five to local planning scheme number three, nom normalisation of Bifer district structure, structure plan, corner southwestern highway, Nettleton Road, Bifer. That was passed on block. Um, that then brings us to agenda item 10.1.11 or 10.1.11, shortlist options for future regional level playground facility for the Shire of Serpentine, Jarrodale. Is there a councillor who's happy to move a motion? Councillor Mazzini, are you happy to move the officer's recommendation? I am. Thank and you're happy to second Councillor Duggan? Yes, thank you. Is there anyone opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. That brings us to agenda item 10.1.12, which is proposed amendment number two to the Dolly Road Precinct Local Structure Plan. Is there an off is there a councillor who's happy to move a motion? Thank you, Councillor Duggan, and you're happy to move the officer's recommendation? Happy to move officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a councillor who's happy to second the motion? Thank you, Councillor Jarrett. Is there anyone opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. That brings on to agenda item 10.2, which is infrastructure services reports. 10.2.1 is council consent to land dedication, Tonkin Highway extension and Thomas Road upgrade. Now there is an alternate motion that has been circulated. Councillor Duggan, would you like to move that? Yes, please, Mr. President. The addition to um, the alternate motion that I put forward is points to one to five as listed in the officer's recommendation with an addition of point six, which is request the chief executive officer to request Main Roads West Australia to one, acknowledge the heritage significance of the place known as Fremnell's Dairy, located at 681 Hopkinson Road, Carter, which will be impacted as part of the Tonkin Highway Extension Project. Point two, consider incorporating suitable elements of Fremnell's Dairy building in the artwork or landscaping components of the Tonkin Highway Extension Project in consultation with the Shire of Serpentine, Jarrodale. Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Is there a councillor who's happy to second the amended alternate motion? Thank you, Councillor Bishop. Is there anyone opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. And again, we'll need a difference, a reason for difference. Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Thanks, Mr. President. Um, if the reason for difference can be to acknowledge the importance of the history of uh, From Knowles Dairy to the Shire of Serpentine, Jarrodale. Are you happy with that wedding, Council Duggan? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I just, sorry, can I just go back to it? Thank you. So maybe it should be to acknowledge the importance of Fremnell's dairy to the history of Shire of Serpentine, Jarrodale. Yep. 
That's better. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Um, that brings on to agenda item 10.2.2, which is Watkins Road Waste and Recycling Transfer Station redesign options. Now, there has been an alternate motion that was circulated prior to the one that I circulated. That's from Councillor Mazzini. Would you like to move that alternate motion, Councillor Mazzini? I would. Thank you, Mr President. Thank you. Can you just um, ensure that that's correct on the screen, please? That's correct. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Is there a requirement for Councillor Mazzini to read it out for the recording, Mr. I, I think it's good practice just to to identify what the differences are, Mr. President. If Councillor Mazzini is happy to do are that, you, are you happy, Councillor Mazzini? Just to, thank you. Um, so points of difference. Um, point number two approves the following budget variation, noting a limited community engagement campaign. Um, do I need to read all those numbers down, Mr CEO? Thank you. Um, so reason variation to enable the following community engagement activities for community engagement relating to waste services throughout the Shire. Point one, community engagement at one council in the community stall at the SJ Farmers Market and one major event during the engagement campaign costed at $3,000. Point two, promotion and advertising of the engagement campaign using digital and traditional channels, including Shire-wide a shy, a shy wide mail out to all residents costed at twelve thousand dollars. Point three, consultancy to analyse campaign results and provide an evaluation report costed at twenty five thousand dollars. Uh, thank you, Councillor Mazzini. Is there a councillor who's happy to second the motion? Thank you, Councillor Jarrett. Is there anyone opposed to the motion? I'm opposed to it. A councillor, Ms. Eames, like to open debate, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so I brought forth this alternate motion this evening because I understand that $100,000 is quite excessive for community consultation, um, and that's why I put forth the option to reduce the cost to $40,000. Staff officers um, and third-party consultant have put time and money into this very comprehensive report um, and devising the concept options to simply disregard the need and the opportunity to consult a residence with the information um, and put it in the too hard, too much money basket would be really disappointing. The Local Government Act Section 2.10 states that one of the roles and functions of a councillor is to facilitate communication between the, counts, the community and the council, and by not doing so, I believe, would really poorly reflect on all of us um, as a council and a shire. I think we've all seen throughout this entire period that how much of an impact this has had on our community. Um, social media and in-person feedback has that has made it really clear to all of us. Um, and one could argue that we have all seen this feedback. Why can't we just use that? Um, informal feedback of this kind before the release of this report in a digestible manner to the public, um, it's not going to give us the data we need to all make an informed decision. At this point in time, other than the, the report that has been prepared for Council, um, which has not been designed to engage with the community, residents have not been shown how this is going to affect their lives and, most importantly, their rates. This is only going to be achieved by an effective engagement campaign designed to make the information easy to unpack. We collect the data, we analyse the results, and as a Council, we make an informed decision. This is one of those really, really rare occasions when we are making a decision that affects absolutely everybody in the Shire, all ages, all wards. I want to ensure that every single household has the opportunity to have their say. I think that will be most well achieved by the mail out that's included as part of the engagement campaign. So yes, in short, in the short term, we could save money on picking a concept tonight and refusing any community consultation. I'm not an expert in waste disposal or the waste needs of those on rural properties or commercial businesses. Um, I need to hear from those people. Um, and I really look forward to hearing from as many residents as possible through the proper channels um, once the residents have been provided with the information um, required. Um, and which I think we can achieve with a reduced budget. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mazzini. Councillor Gerald, would you like to speak or reserve? Uh, I'll reserve, President Coles. Uh, 
Thank you, um, Councillor Jarrett. Um, I am opposed to this motion, and if the motion is lost, I foreshadow my alternate motion, which was circulated after the one that we're discussing now. The reason that I oppose um, this motion is the cost. So initially, the officer's recommendation was $100,000 to do community engagement, and then this motion now um, reduces that down to $40,000, which is certainly the right way. But I am concerned about spending ratepayers' money on something that we already know. And it's not a guess, it's not a hunch, it's not a suspicion, it is a fact. Whilst it'd be remiss of me to rely upon Facebook, there's something that happened last week and rates were issued. Some people can turn around and say they don't receive their rates, but the majority of people receive their rates. And it's a tax, as we said last at the um, special council meeting. It is unequivocal that people are complaining about their rates because they see they have nothing to show for their rates. What's the number one issue that people talk to me about, about rates? We don't even have an effing waste transfer station anymore. Why would I, as a Shire president, want to spend $40,000 of ratepayers' money to go and ask them whether they want the waste transfer station open. As recently as yesterday, after someone having a go at me about what suit I wore on Facebook and the rates and that apparently their ratepayers' money paid for my suit, I went and spoke to that person. First thing she said was we don't even have a waste transfer station. You're the Shire president. You closed the waste transfer station. Perhaps there was a little bit of misinformation there. But certainly, um, I said to her and her two neighbours that joined us for a tour of her street in Byford about what they think they don't get for their rates. The first thing that came up is waste transfer. Why don't we have a tip? Armadale has a tip. Every other shire local government has a tip. Why don't we have a tip? You close the tip. What are you doing about the tip? That was the number one issue that she spoke to me about, and that was echoed by her two neighbours. The second issue was about drainage, and we've already spoken about that tonight. So for me, it would need, and I just spoke tonight about the President's report about being responsible with ratepayers' money, $40,000 to ask the community what they want. I'm all for community consultation. We're here to represent the community. But I was around when this waste transfer station opened some six years ago, whenever it was. It was received well at the time. And then people turned around and said, well, actually, we don't want that now. We don't want to go to the waste transfer station because we don't have a tow bar. We don't have a trailer. So that was fixed by putting trailers in. And then people said, well, that's great. We've got free trailers. But how do we get our hard waste from our home to the waste transfer station? What I'm saying is you go out and you ask people, you ask four people what they want. They'll give you four different answers, except... They all want the facility open. We can talk about going back out and asking people, what happens if we, for example, get 100 responses? I reckon if we've got 100 responses, probably 25% would want hard waste collections from their verge. Maybe another 15% would want it taken to the waste transfer station. And another group may say we want both. What I'm saying is community engagement is important. But community engagement should not cost ratepayers money for things we already know. We know that this waste transfer station must be opened. My foreshadowed motion talks about remediating the waste transfer station for green waste and then having the hard waste bookable facility from your curbside to continue. You may ask the question, well, why do you come up with that? Because since we introduced this only a couple of months ago, we've had 600 odd people bring up the Shire to book the collection from their front door or well, not their front door, from the front verge. And unequivocally, it's probably the most successful thing this show has done in the recent times. There is no need to spend money to go out and ask the community about how successful the hard waste collection is, a bookable system from their verge, because we know. We've already got the stats, and people have been telling us how successful it is. So as the show president, we, or I must be uh, responsible for using money. I acknowledge the great work the team has done, um, the Director of Infrastructure Services and his team, this has been the single biggest issue for me as a Shire president since October last year. 
I've been on 6PR Radio, I've been on the ABC. It's interesting we talk about community engagement. Every Saturday, the last Saturday of the month, there's councillors standing out the front here at the markets. We know what people tell us. People come and talk to us about a variety of issues. And I think nearly every Saturday that I've been there, and I've only missed the one, people have mentioned the waste transfer station. People have said that R word, which isn't refuse, it's rates. What do we get for our rates? We don't even have an effing, and sorry to be blunt, that's what they say, we don't even have an effing tip. By tip, they mean a waste transfer station. What I will suggest is if this motion does uh, fail and I foreshadow my alternate, I'd be happy in the alternate motion to have, and I'm not a communications expert, but have a popping centre where we can explain to the public and educate the public about what we're doing. And that would be to reopen the waste transfer station for green waste and have the two hard waste bookable collections. We could do that at the markets on a Saturday and have it open up as a drop-in centre so we can educate the community and tell the community what we're doing. And I'll be front and centre explaining why we made the decision to reopen it because the information from the ratepayers is what we want to open. I cannot justify spending $1,000 let alone $40,000 for the community to tell us what they may or may not want. I may be arrogant, but I also need to make a decision as a child president, and that decision is to reopen the waste transfer station for green waste. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak for the motion? Councillor Bishop. Thanks, Mr President. I'll just speak very briefly. Um, the, the waste transfer station is obviously a very de desirable community asset. Uh, I think it has a place for every resident um, there's also been some significant issues that I'm sure we as councillors have all had to confront through the feedback we received from the community. Uh, I therefore think it is abundantly important that we do consult the community before we make this decision that has impacted absolutely everyone from residential, you know, urban residents to our rural community. Uh, I think we do need to understand fully what it is they expect from us as a council. Uh, in moving forward with the waste transfer station. I appreciate that there has been a lot of feedback in person and online um, that gives us a bit of a, a sense of what the community may be expecting, uh, but I think it is very worthwhile to ensure that we know for certain before we make this decision. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bishop. Is anyone else who'd like to speak against the motion? Councillor Mack. Thank you, Mr President. I just wanted to address a couple of the issues that came up in debate and and I do agree, it is vitally important that we um, take our role seriously as councillors and, and to represent our residents and consult with our residents. But I echo the comments that we have heard from our residents on what they want with this issue, and this is another $40,000. And my concern is that we go out with the options that are available in front of us, and we get five different responses back in equal proportion. We're going to have 80% of our community that says we do not listen to them because we have chosen one of the other options. We know this tip is wanted to be reopened. We have viable options that were put in front of us to make decisions on behalf of our ratepayers. I, for one, have been listening to the ratepayers at all of the community engagement when they come around. And um, I'd also like to um, talk about the comment uh, from the debate from Councillor Mazzini that we're not experts on waste management. My question would be is that are our residents experts in waste management as well? The responses that we're going to get back from them will be from a position of what best suits their needs and they're going to be a, such a variety of needs to suit everybody. As was mentioned when this first came up, I remember the first time I ran for council I even put a post on my Facebook page talking about um, a Simpsons quote saying that um, can't someone else do it because our waste management services were just so heavily debated at the time. People wanted skip bins to come in. People wanted trailers. People didn't have tow balls. There was just so many different options. And if we end up coming back here after the community consultation and we're in none the wiser position, uh, that's exactly where I think we will be. So for that reason, I can't support the motion as it's put before us. Uh, thank you, Councillor Mack. Is anyone else would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Jarrett. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. 
I have great I have grave concerns about rushing this process. If we get this wrong, it'll have long lasting impacts and possibly costly ones at that on both the community and the organisation itself. With the with a community with such diverse needs like the Shire of SJ, it's imperative that rather than rely on anecdotal evidence collected from ourselves or Facebook, we collect data that is representational of our community's wants and needs and balancing those with those of a growing organisation such as ours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Jarrett. Anyone would like to speak against the motion? Thank you, Councillor Mazzini, would like to close. Thank you, Mr President. Um, thank you to my fellow councillors for their points as well. Um, in closing, I think to deny our residents opportunities to be formally consulted demonstrates a mistrust of the community, and I'm just simply not okay with that. Um, although, as councillors, we were elected to represent our residents, this is just too big of a decision to be making without any form of formal consultation. We take this seriously, and we do it the right way the first time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Mazzini. All those in favour of the motion? Oh, all those against? Motion is carried for two. And we will need a reason for the difference. Thank you, Councillor Mazzini. Thank you. Um, to conduct, sorry, to conduct um, thorough community consultation on the matter or issue. Matter. Thank you. That brings us to agenda item 10.3, which is corporate services report. 10.3.1 is confirmation of payment of creditors. That was passed on block. 10.3.2 is monthly financial report June 2024. That was also passed on block. Uh, 10.3.3 is updates, delegations and authorisations register. Is there a councillor who would like to move a motion? Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Is there a, are you moving the officer's recommendation? Yes, thanks, Mr is, President. Thank you. Is there a councillor who's happy to second the motion? Thank you, Councillor Jarrett. Anyone opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. That brings on to... Agenda item 10.3.4, Council Policy Review, Council Policy 3.3.2, Councillor Fees and Entitlements. This was passed, no, it wasn't passed on block. I paused. Um, I do have an alternate motion here from Councillor Matt. Thank you, Mr CEO, which is 10.3.4, um, Councillor Matt. Would you like to move that motion, Councillor Matt? Yes, thank you. I'd like to move the alternate motion as circulated with the addition of point three. Request that the Chief Executive Officer write to the Minister for Local Government and the Minister for Public Sector Management requesting that the minimum and maximum amounts for meeting attendance fees and allowances be replaced with a single fee and allowance for each local government band. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Mac, is there a seconder for this motion? Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Is anyone opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. That brings on agenda item. Oh, sorry, Mr. President. Councillor Mack did have a reason for difference there. Are you happy with and that? Yes, the reason for difference, as uh, mentioned on the board, to depoliticise the setting of councillor allowances. Thank you, Councillor Matt. That brings us on to agenda item 10.3.5, which is a corporate business plan performance report, April to June 2024 and 23 to 24 end of year. That motion was passed on block. That brings to agenda item 10.3.6, which is long term financial plan 2024 to 2034 and corporate business plan 24 to 2028. Is there a councillor who is happy to move a motion? Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Is that the officer's recommendation? Yes, thanks. Thank you. Is there a councillor who's happy to second the motion? Thank you, Councillor Bishop. Anyone opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. That brings us on to agenda item 10.4, which is community engagement reports. 10.4.1. 
Department of Local Government, Sport and Cultural Industries Club Night Lights Grant Program 2024-25, application prioritisation. That was passed on block. 10.4.2 is establishment of a school representative on access and inclusion advisory group. I got it right that time. That was passed on block. Uh, 10.4.3 is the Keysbrook Fire Incident Community Debrief Information Report. That was passed on block. 10.4.4 is Endorsement of Bushfire Risk Management Plan 2024-2026. That also was passed on block. 10.4.5, item is 10.4.5, Federal Grant Applications, Shire Election Advocacy Projects. Mr President, just a reminder to elected members that we did distribute an addendum to this item late last week um, with a revised uh, officer recommendation um, that was emailed to councillors and put in hard copies in pigeonhole. We have copies that people don't have now. And I believe, Mr. CEO, that's one that's reflected now on the screen. Yeah. Correct. Is there a councillor who is happy to move uh, the officer's recommendation or another motion pertaining to this agenda item? Thank you, Councillor Duggan. That's the officer's recommendation. Happy to move the officer's recommendation as presented on the telly. Thanks. Thank you. And is there a councillor who is happy to second the motion? Thank you, Councillor Mazzini. Is there anyone opposed? motion is carried unanimously. That brings us into agenda item 10.5, Executive Services Reports 10.5.1, Peel Regional Leaders Forum Minutes. That was passed on block. 10.5.2 is Waste Audit Findings and FOGO Considerations. Is there a councillor who would like to move? Oh, there's an alternate. Thank you, Mr CEO. There's an alternate from Councillor Mack. Councillor Mack, would you like to move your alternate? Yes, thank you. I'd like to move option two with the addition of point three, which requests that the Chief Executive Officer report back to Council by October 2024 on options including associated costs to introduce a home composting rebate system. Uh, thank you, Councillor Mack. Is there a councillor who is happy to second the alternate motion? Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Is there anyone opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. And reason for difference, please, Councillor Matt. Can you just check the screen behind you or in front of you, wherever is easier, Councillor Matt? Make sure we have with the wording. Thank you, Councillor Matt. That brings us on to agenda item 10.6 point or 10.6 is confidential reports. Um, we do need to close the meeting to members of the public for our confidential reports. Can I have a council please to move a motion to close the meeting to the public? Thank you, Councillor Bishop. Councillor Mazzini, happy to second. Thank you, Councillor. Is there anyone opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. I would respectfully ask members of the public to please depart the Chamber. And I would remind councillors, please, not to use their microphones if they would like to debate or ask questions. <laughs> 